In this video, we're going to modify our SSH banner so that every time we log in over SSH, we get a current weather report. So let's start by installing SSH. I'm going to do a sudo su here. And I'm going to apt install SSH to install our SSH server. May already be installed. Take a second to do that. And let's test it. Now we're going to SSH to ourselves. We haven't talked about networking in this course yet, uh, most likely. So we're going to SSH um, to localhost, which is our local machine. We're going to create an SSH connection to ourself, to that keyword localhost, which uh, indicates that you know we want to connect to our own computer here. That localhost word is a special one. I'm going to put hyphen L student because we are logged in as the root user right now, and you can't SSH and log in using the username root. You can log in using student, so we're going to pass it hyphen L student until that's the user that we want to log in with. So I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to type student. And you'll see that the default banner when we log in over SSH, and we could do that from any computer that can connect to this, we get some default information welcoming us, telling us what the version is. It's letting me know that I need a system restart required. So you should, you should see something along those lines. I'm going to type exit. This is going to exit me out of my SSH connection. And now I'm back at root in the terminal here. We've closed SSH. Okay, so let's create a directory in home student. We'll do it as root and that'll be fine. And I'll call this login banner. So I'm gonna CD login banner. And let's use a program now. Let's just test it real quick and we'll create a cron job that does this every, I don't know, we'll do it every minute for now, but you would wanna tweak it so that it happens like every 24 hours, I think. Um, but we'll just run it for now. We're gonna use wget which is a simple way to fetch web pages. There's another program called curl that works very well that we'll use in the cybersecurity class to do things like modify headers um, and make some pretty advanced web requests. But for simple web, re web requests, wget is great. This will fetch things from the web. It will mirror entire websites. wget is pretty cool. And so I'm gonna put hyphen O because we wanna output this and I'll call this mybanner.txt, and we're gonna fetch a web page here. So there's a web page called wttr.in. You could go to that in your web browser and see what it is. So we're gonna wget wttr.in, and we're gonna save the contents of that web page into mybanner.txt. Go ahead and get that and hit enter. And you should see mybanner.txt is 100%. It should be a file that it was able to find. So let's go ahead and cat that. I'm going to cat mybanner.txt. And you'll see that we have, for when I'm creating this tutorial, um, it's a nice, cool morning this morning. You know, we're between 42 and 48. Uh, actually, I think it's actually, yeah, Tuesday this morning, right? So here's our three-day weather outlook in a nice little ASCII format. I kind of like it. Kind of neat. So let's make it so that we see this every time we log in instead of that system information. So we're going to go to CD Etsy and uh, it's going to be the Etsy update mote D dot D folder here. And if we look in here, if I type LS, you can see because this is a dot D folder. Um, a lot of times on Linux, that tells us that everything in this folder is going to be loaded by some program. And so we've got 00, zero header. Let's go ahead and cat 00, zero header and see what that does. And you can see that it starts with um, bin sh, so it's a shell script. And it will go in and it will print welcome to. And then we've got a string that's being pulled from up here that's telling us what the current version of Ubuntu is. So that 00, zero header is what we saw when we logged in. Excuse me, it's pulling from over here, uname o. And you can see this is kind of a neat concept. This is one that I'd like to point out that we're actually going to use. Inside of quotation marks, we see a dollar sign and then parentheses. 
So this is a way that you can execute a program within a shell script uh, in certain contexts. And we're going to do that and you'll see how that works. But I could check that. I could say uname hyphen O right now just to see what that does. You can see it prints uh, new Linux. I could print uname hyphen R. You can see there's our kernel version. I could print uname hyphen M and it prints x86.64. So uh, we're printing all that stuff and essentially this is what we're seeing when we're logging in over SSH. Okay, so that's cool. It's all default. Let's do this. Let's do an RM and then asterisk. Be sure you are in the Etsy update mode D.D folder or you may have some issues later on. So we're going to erase all of this. Next step is we're going to pico a file and I'm going to call this 01 hyphen custom. We're going to create, excuse me, custom like that. And we're going to create a file inside of our mode D, which stands for message of the day. We're going to do the same thing that we saw earlier at the top. We're going to go bin and then bash. That should work. Bin bash is a valid shell. That's going to, it's one of those things that we tend to see uh, inside of shell scripts. It's required sometimes. And we're going to use an echo command. And so uh, I could echo, let's try it, test one, two, three, four, five, just like that. And with echo, we know that we can echo a string, right? So let's go ahead and save that. And then exit. And now let's try to SSH in, SSH um, localhost hyphen L student. I can see that in this case, I don't see test one, two, three, four, five. So let's pico zero one custom. Let's figure out what I did wrong. Let's try bin sh. Maybe that's gonna make the difference here. Just like that. I'm okay with having a minor error here at this point. Still, I don't see test one, two, three, four, five. Hold on just a second. I'm gonna modify this and figure it out. But of course, I'm gonna do an lsalh. It's actually executing this because we're running an echo command in there. We need to have execute permissions on this file. So I'm gonna go ahead because there's nothing dangerous here and I'm gonna chmod 77701 custom and I'll give it all permissions. And if I do an lsalh, now whoever wants to execute or change this file is fine. This is not the most secure way to do it, but I'm going to use 777 anyway. So now that this file is executable, we'll execute this echo command. We'll be able to run that. So let's try it again. ssh localhost, I'll student, and test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. So pause the video, get to the point where when you log in over SSH, it does indeed print this because we'll have a checkpoint coming up. I'm going to type exit. We're going to exit out of our SSH session. And now what we had created was um, in home student login banner. We have this mybanner.txt that contains the weather that we fetched a few minutes ago. So there's a little text file that contains a nice weather report. Let's make it print that every time we log in. And I should have backgrounded that. I'm going to type pico 01 custom. And we're going to echo, but we're going to use that execute um, functionality. We're going to make echo echo the contents of a file. So I'm going to type um, cat home student login let me take a look here i have to hit control c to take a look because i forgot what it was login underscore banner is what i called it login underscore banner my banner dot txt i'm gonna put a closing parentheses so this is what i mean by executing a command within a certain context we've got an echo command but we want it to print the output of another command and so we can do it like this with this dollar sign parentheses inside of a bash shell that's a pretty good tip right there. You'll see that quite a bit. I think we're in a good spot to demonstrate that. So I'm going to hit Control O to save. And I'll hit Control X to exit. I could hit Control Z to background. Maybe this will work. Hopefully it will. 
I'm going to SSH hyphen uh, SSH localhost hyphen L student. I'm going to log in as student. You can see that when we log in, we now get a current weather report. Now, the problem is I went and I did a wget manually earlier, and so this is not going to change, so we need to create a cron job for that. So let's do that, um, and I'll do it as root this time. I'll do a sudo su, and I'm going to do a cron tab hyphen e, And let's create a cron tab here that runs every minute. So I'm going to hit control K. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, like so. And in this case, we want to run the wget command. So I'm going to hit control Z to background. And I'm going to locate wget and I'm going to grep bin. And you can see that user bin does have wget. So we know where that executable is. We want to reference that directly here. So I'm going to hit FG to get back to my cron tab. I'm going to go U USR bin wget, and it'll do this every minute. And I'm going to hyphen capital O in the name of the file, home student login underscore. I keep forgetting. I know I just looked at it. Hold on. Banner. And it's going to be my banner.txt, just like that. So now um, that's the file that it's going to write to. And then we want to grab wttr.in is the website that we're going to fetch from. So every minute wget is going to create this home student login banner, my banner.txt. And it's going to get it from wttr.in. Pause the video, make it look like that. I'm going to hit Control O. To I'm going to hit exit. Let's verify that cron tab is good. I'm going to var cat var spool cron cron tabs root. And I look down here after catting that, and I can see that it did indeed save this time. There was a problem in the last video. I'm not sure what happened there. So now we should be running that every minute. Now, that's a little bit overkill for a weather report. You probably set it up for a cron tab that runs in the day field, make it run like every 24 hours. That would make sense for this. But let's go to login banner here. And I'm going to type date. And I can see that we're 11, uh, 55, 49. So I'm going to type date again. We're at 11, 55, 55. I'm going to wait for it to kick over to 11, 56. Now at this point, that wget command should be running. So I'm going to type ls hyphen alh. We're going to look at my banner and we're going to look at the timestamp on it. So the timestamp says 1156. And so that means that 1156 exactly, my banner was updated. So here's how you're going to get credit. You could screenshot this, but yeah, hopefully you'll be able to get an instructor. Um, you're going to do uh, a date and you're going to show the rollover here of the time. You could be anywhere close. It could be 11.56.05, whatever, five seconds. And then you're going to do an ls hyphen alh, and we'll be able to check that the timestamp on my banner matches the most recent rollover of your clock. So here it is on the checkpoint uh, sheet. And here it is. We're going to type the date command and then type ls alh show that the timestamp on my banner.txt matches the most recent rollover of the clock. And if an instructor isn't available, you can just screenshot um, the fact that you type the date command and we see a rollover and then you typed LSALH and we see a timestamp. Thank you for your time and uh, let us know if you have any questions.